Hey, book lovers. I'm Katie Dodrell, and this is While I Read. It's time for my March reading wrap-up, where I'll discuss and review every book that I read in March. I read some really great books this month, and I'm excited about getting to tell you about them. I feel like I have some great recommendations for you. This month, I finally felt like I got back into a good reading rhythm. Honestly, since starting this YouTube channel, I feel like I've been so busy with work and family and creating content for this channel that I haven't had a lot of time to actually read. A lot of the time that I would have spent reading was spent filming and editing videos. And I wasn't getting that good bookish feeling that I think every reader is familiar with where you're reading a good book and all day long you're thinking about the book and looking forward to when you have a chance to read the book again. I just wasn't getting that feeling in January and February. But in March, it was back. I've mentioned that my goal for this year is to read 100 books. I've read 16 so far, and according to Goodreads, I'm six books behind schedule. Oh well, Maybe I'll get the chance to catch up over the summer. I'm just glad that I have found my rhythm with reading and creating content for this channel. Now, without further ado, let's get into my reviews of the books that I read in March. The first book I read this month was Have You Seen Me by Kate White. Kate White has been one of my favorite authors for years now. She writes thrillers and novels of suspense. I always enjoy her books because her protagonists are generally women who are smart, competent, and hardworking. People I feel like I could be friends with, although I'd probably also be a little intimidated by them. Also, while bad things do happen in her novels, she'll kill off a character that you like or a character that you like will turn out to be the murderer. The protagonist always triumphs in the end. Her books have an optimism that I like. Have You Seen Me is about a woman named Allie Linden who loses her memory of two days in her life. She is diagnosed as having been in a dissociative state likely caused by some kind of trauma that caused her brain to block out the memory of those two days. So the book is about her trying to figure out what happened during those two days that she can't remember, and also trying to figure out what caused her memory loss. This book was published in 2020, and I've actually read it several times before. Kate White books are good reads to me because of the characters, the atmosphere, and the elegant writing. If you read this book and decide you like Kate White, you've got a lot of good reading ahead of you because she's the author of 18 suspense novels. Some of those are in her Bailey Wagon series, which is really good, and some are standalone books. I've read them all, many of them multiple times, and I really enjoy them. The next two books that I read are both thrillers, very quick, enjoyable reads. I actually read them both during about 72 hours over my spring break. They were by authors that I've read before, so I knew what I was getting into. Basically, books by these authors make me think of eating a really big piece of chocolate cake. It's so good, and you just can't stop eating it. But then when you get done, you feel kind of sick. But it's probably worth it because it was so good. First, The Stranger by Kirsten Modlin. This book is about a woman named Tibby and a man named Walker, with some chapters from Tibby's point of view and some from Walker's. There is also another point of view character who we don't know who they are, but we know they're a murderer. Walker and Tibby are both on a lonely interstate during a huge snowstorm, and Walker ends up giving Tibby a ride. 
they end up at a roadside motel together and strange things start happening, especially when they find a dead body. Throughout the book, you're wondering who the murderer is, whether it might be Tibby or Walker, or whether it's somebody else entirely. I read the book very quickly, like in one day, because I did really want to find out what happened. It's very suspenseful, and I loved the tension of the characters realizing that they're not just trying to stay safe from a snowstorm, but they're also trying to keep from being murdered. While I enjoyed the book while I was reading it, it wasn't that memorable to me. Also, just a warning, it was quite violent and gory with descriptions of the murder stabbing people. If you don't like that kind of thing, you might want to stay away from this book. I don't really like that kind of thing, but I did enjoy the book anyway. It's a very suspenseful story that kept me engaged the whole time. Similarly to The Stranger, The Yacht was a book that I finished in just a couple of days because it was so exciting. It's about a young woman named Hannah who goes to a New Year's Eve party on a yacht belonging to her friends. However, the day after the party, they wake up to find the yacht adrift in the open ocean with no land in sight, no fuel, and none of them know how to sail the yacht. Hannah's rich so-called friends turn out to be pretty awful, and they all start turning on each other as they try to figure out who cut the the yacht loose, and how they can get back to land. One reviewer called it the Lord of the Flies in a cocktail dress, and I think that's pretty accurate. I enjoyed this book while I was reading it. I couldn't put it down because I wanted to find out what happened. But the characters in it were not that believable to me. Hannah's so-called friends were just over-the-top awful caricatures of snobby rich people, and they didn't seem real to me at all. And like The Stranger, the yacht was not that memorable to me. Even writing this summary two weeks later, I struggled to remember what happened in the book. But I did enjoy both The Stranger and The Yacht while I was reading them. So if you want a quick, enjoyable read, definitely pick up one of these thrillers. The next few books on the list are really good books. Books that I enjoyed not just while I was reading them, but that had substance to them. First, The Thursday Murders Club by Richard Osman. This book is about four friends who live in a retirement home and meet weekly to discuss unsolved crimes. They are the Thursday Murder Club. When a murder is committed that involves the retirement home, the friends work together to solve it. The book is both funny and poignant, as well as being suspenseful. With the main characters being in their 70s, they've been through a lot. Some of them have lost spouses. They've all lost friends. The book is a great portrait of aging gracefully. This book was published in 2020, and there are actually four books in the Thursday Murder Club series now. It had a lot of characters, and they were a little hard to keep straight in my mind, but I enjoyed the book, and I know I'll be reading the other books in the series. If you like gentle, poignant humor along with your murder, you'll enjoy this book. The next book I read was Murder Road by Simone St. James. I really like Simone St. James, even though her books always terrify me. This one was no exception. It really scared me, but I also really enjoyed it. It is set in 1995, and it's about a young couple named April and Eddie who are on their honeymoon. While they're traveling on a deserted stretch of highway, they pick up a hitchhiker who has been stabbed. April and Eddie fall into the murder investigation, even becoming suspects themselves. 
it seems that the deserted highway where they were traveling has a long history of brutal, unsolved murders. As with all Simone St. James books, this one deals heavily with the supernatural. As I said, Simone St. James books always terrify me, but her characters are so likable that I enjoy them anyway. I also really liked that this book was set in the 1990s and has a lot of pop culture references from that time period. My favorite Simone St. James book remains The Book of Cold Cases, but I really enjoyed this book too. You'll like it if you like murder with some supernatural elements, or even if you're like me and don't really like the supernatural elements, you might still enjoy this book because of the well-developed characters and good writing. Finally, I read Still See You Everywhere by Lisa Gardner. This is the third book in the series about a woman named Frankie Elkin, who is very good at finding missing people. In Still See You Everywhere, Frankie is contacted by a woman known as the Beautiful Butcher, a female serial killer who is on death row just three weeks away from execution. The Beautiful Butcher asks Frankie to go to a remote atoll, which is basically a kind of island, off the coast of Hawaii to search for her long-lost sister, who has possibly been kidnapped by the rich owner of the atoll. The atoll is very inaccessible. You can only get to it by a charter jet, and there are only a handful of people living and working there. The book definitely has some dark themes. It does involve a serial killer, but it also has a lot of lightness and humor. Frankie is a great character. She's funny and irreverent and always has a smart aleck comment, even in moments of danger. The setting of the atoll is beautifully described. Frankie talks to the wolf spider living in her cabin every day, as well as to the crab who she is sure brings her orange blossoms each morning. The supporting characters are great too. And in this book, none of my favorite characters die, although it is a very violent book. I've actually read the second book in the Frankie Elkin series, One Step Too Far, but not the first book in the series. In One Step Too Far, Frankie is trying to find a missing hiker in the Wyoming wilderness. I read that book because I liked the remote setting, and I liked it in Still See You Everywhere as well. So if you like thrillers set in remote, beautiful locations, you'll enjoy these two books in the Frankie Elkin series. So that's it for my March reading wrap-up. I enjoyed all of the books that I read this month, and I'm so glad to be back in a good reading rhythm. I hope I've given you some ideas for books to read. If you've read any of these books, or if you'd like to recommend some books for me, please comment. Now, go take a walk while I read.